Aloha, Maui Nui. Hey, this is Josh Porter here. And Jason Verkhart. Welcome to episode 46 of The Solar Coaster. Virtual off-grid. Virtual off-grid. This is uh, Steps to Energy Independence. So we're talking here about how to protect your family. Uh, there's a lot going on around the world, Jay. You know, sure. In these, in these places, like Puerto Rico is kind of the main one we're thinking about. Puerto Rico, but, Florida, a lot of exposed areas that have been damaged by... Yeah. weather. <laughs> yeah, and these these grids are not so dissimilar from our own. They're right. not. They're in environments that are exposed to kind of the ocean. Typically, you know, there's mm-hmm. uh, the, you know these uh, the oceans nearby, and these cyclones or these hurricanes come through, and and the damage and the level of damage has been uh, well, not just significant, pretty uh, disastrous is really what yeah, it's that's, been. Yeah, that's that's really what it's called. Yeah. It's a disaster, um, and we get a lot of these questions. So we figured we would dedicate an entire show to kind of the levels of how to protect yourself and what it really means. Right. What steps can we take? Hey, I've got solar. I'm good. Well, maybe, maybe not. Right. Let's find out. <laughs> and in this conversation, you know, we actually last week we had we were really fortunate to have John Borland on the show, mm-hmm. uh, amazing consultant, talking about there's kind of this parallel in the steps that he's taking in terms of like the redundancies he's creating when he's trying to save money. And, and mm-hmm. John's really there. He's just got the the ledger out and the sharpening the pencil and he's doing it down to the cent and the kilowatt hour and he's all about saving money yep. and increasing uh, return on investment and you know cutting and cutting and cutting that simple payback period down to a 2.7 year he was able to achieve with on-grid batteries which is right, radical. Right. His, his motivation was very much monetary but as a side effect of all that he became a very secure individual in, yeah. a, in, a, in a space where most people are not. Right and that's what we're talking about here that's what we're talking about here. You know we were uh, just a, a, a small aside when we started this we're going oh you know we should be talking about the grasshopper and the ant. <laughs> right that old uh, that old 1934 you picked up the, yeah, uh, the, the Disney the, the Disney silly one, symphonies yeah. yep. and the preparation of the you know the grasshopper with his you know or the, the ant rather right and then the grasshopper kind of enjoying the summer fiddling away and you know and that whole thing um and we kept explaining it around town and everyone's like what are you talking about <laughs> yeah nobody actually remembers this particular parable and i'm a little disappointed <laughs> you need to go out right now get the dvd for your children whatever it happened whatever it's a good happens one. It's aesop's fables yeah, it was absolutely. adopted by walt disney Correct. and the silly symphony series in the 30s yep and he did like the Ugly Duckling, and he did. They did the um, a Tortoise and the Hare, yep. and they did uh, the you know the the Ant and the Grasshopper. Yeah. I, I'm like everybody knows that, and everyone's like, what apparently earth not. Yeah, are I did. you talking about? <laughs> Jonah didn't, but he's younger. <laughs> hey, we just got a message from Emily Emily Erickson saying she can hear us. Excellent. Apparently, our link's working well. Thanks for that, Emily. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, so this is going to be a great show. We're really excited about this. Uh, let's jump right and do some housekeeping. Get into our news and events, and then dig into virtual off grid. Okay, shall we? Let's go. All right. So uh, hey. Everybody, this is the Solar Coaster. Fr- we can be found right here Fridays at 105 p.m. KAOI 1110 AM. Uh, we're also on some FM stations, 96.7 FM Central, 96.5 FM West Side, 98.7 FM Up Country. It is a call-in show. If you'd like to give us a call and stump us and, and you know, kind of uh, pick our brains a little bit in this area, please do. 242-7800. You can reach us, 242-7800. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this, this show in particular, because this really is directed at all of you. Uh, listening who live here on Maui, um, you want to know exactly what you need to do and how far down the scale you can get. <laughs> Got to get prepared. Got to yeah, get, get prepared. Get, get prepared. Yeah, and it's doable. It is definitely a possibility. We got a great yeah. website, Jay. What's going on with the web these days? Oh, the solar-coaster.com is out there. has all our previous shows, uh, blog, video now, uh, of all the old live streams. Nice. Uh, we're adding a whole bunch of other content as things come available. Uh, we're going to have some exclusive, like, off-hours content now um, as the as the oh, show, yeah. As the show has been growing over the past year, we were, st- we're starting to do other things, and we have some concepts of doing some after-hours stuff, and that'll definitely yeah. all be available through the web's content. Do need to apologize. The Stream Live link does not work right now on the website. If you want to listen to us on the internet, uh, you can go to KAOI1110.com. That's KAOI1110.com. Click on the Listen Live link there, and you can get to us, but the link for, between our website and that is somehow broken. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, check us out. Um, we have some great sponsors to keep us on the air. Uh, Maui Solar Project, Tabuchi Electric America, Sonam Battery, Pika Energy, and Sundrum Solar. Uh, and, you know, really, these uh, companies are doing some remarkable work out there, each one of them. and uh, Every one of them. They, they, they did not approach us and say, here, please take our money. We, we approached them because they represent what is the best in, yeah. in the solar and energy in his industry right now and really like what they're doing. So. Yeah, and you know, to the, to their credit, uh, they're all actually in Puerto Rico. 
uh, engaged in activity there exactly. for the most part. One of the, one and, of the uh, things that we're, we're talking about yeah. today, uh, a lot of them are out there. They're just donating equipment to uh, schools and hospitals to keep things running. Right. And there's a business imperative as well. I mean, there's an opportunity there Obviously. for the companies to, to get some, some uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, microgrid deployed, right? Mm-hmm. So I know Tabuchi Electric and Taka San, he uh, is going to be there in April. We're talking about taking a little little trip out there potentially. Hopefully like to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we actually right as soon as I said, said that to our partners, uh, Pike Energy, you know, they're like, yeah, we got, you know, I'm going to hook you up with a fellow that's doing it. And then, you know, Blue Ion and Tabuchi and Sony and all the great companies out there that are really doing the hard work are like, come on, come and check it come out. Come and visit. We'll see what, see what we're doing. So we'll, we'll get some live boots on the ground type of check coverage. That out. And then we'll bring it back <laughs> to Maui fun. and show what we found. And I think it's going right. to, uh, hopefully that'll uh, you know, bring some illumination to the, what's potent, what could potentially happen. Yeah, we think we understand what needs to be done now. And it's, it's, but it's very academic to actually see it done in the field, right. understand really what it, what it means for folks. Um, we're going to get a much clearer picture. Yeah. Going yeah. Forward. Yeah. Exciting. A little, you know, a little, like that's, there's a lot going on there. So, uh, and it's, it's also, you know, the, 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 the whole piece is it's, it is a tragedy, right? So it's exciting yes. from a, from a, from a technical perspective on what can be done there. Um, but you know, I hope to see a lot of humanity at its best where people are helping each that's, other. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right, right. <laughs> absolutely. So we'll see what this, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we are on some, uh, podcast locations, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn, yep. and uh, you know, check those out if that's your thing. So, Absolutely. shall we uh, jump Down, right Download into- us and take us on the road. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing before we get started, I, I do want to share uh, that we have confirmation. We've been looking for this for a little while. You know, the Solar Coaster is on its uh, we're se- seven episodes counting down to our year anniversary for our fifty second, and uh, we have confirmation that we're going to have the utility voice represented here next week on the next show. Uh, Jay, do you want to spill the spill the beans? Uh, no, let's keep that. In, uh, in oh, the aside. Okay. Okay. Well, well let's we'll hang I'm on to that. I'm surprised you're talking about it now. No, we we'll do. hang out towards the end of the we show, did, we and we'll tell who's going to. We need to get to talk to folks up over at Miko yeah. earlier this week. They're uh, very, very ecstatic about coming on, and so are we. I mean, yeah. It's going to be a great, great conversation yeah. to finally hear that side of the equation. And a shout out to all our great uh, partners over there: Shana and Joe and Amy and Jaron and uh, if I missed you, sorry, uh, Sable. <laughs> Sable, we had a yep. meeting, right? Yep. So okay. uh, yeah, let's let's jump into our news and events. Jay, there's a lot going on in the world. All right, here we go. Right off um, Green Tech Media article, U.S. rejects EU solar tariff alternative. Um, this was a request. Um, the tariff conversation we've talked about a lot, right? It was signed into law back in January, um, and it was a global tariff. Now, previously, all the tariffs on solar have been targeted at specific countries. So, so we had... So it was like uh, wide sweeping. Right. Wide- I, 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 verse, uh, okay, for example, uh, we had the threats of cheap dumping coming out of China, so cheap panels that would undercut other manufacturers, U.S. manufacturers specifically. Uh, so we would have a tariff levied against panels coming out of China. Mm. And that's very very specific, okay, mm. So because it takes aim at a particular problem. Right. Now, this new tariff is entirely global, and the European Union has an issue with that because according to their point of view, the European panels were not the ones causing the problem, and yet they are now affected by this tariff. So they're asking for what is termed compensation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So they basically want some money back to cover. And that was denied by the Trump administration. And it was denied by the Trump administration, which is an interesting move. Yeah. Um, and I think the, I think Canada is because uh, there's a lot of Canadian companies up there that have, have gone a similar route, and uh, I don't know what the result is of that. But the the bottom line is there's some kind of movement here about how uh, this tariff's actually going to take shape. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the uh, I just got off one of these conference calls where there's a lot of people across the country talking to each other about how it's really impacting things. You know, and it looks like towards the tail end of 2017, there was a lot of there, the, you know, those manufacturers basically boosted prices in anticipation mm-hmm. of the uh, tariffs, right. and they were taking. Profits and those guys, right. the manufacturers, they were they were losing before because they were selling under uh, manufacturing costs a lot of the time when right. panels were in the low 30s when you're buying for you know utility scale uh, systems. But then towards the beginning of this year, they're saying that you know people had already bought all of that, mm-hmm. so there wasn't a lot of sale happening, right? Right. Uh, and you know, but now we're you know they're, they start looking forward through the year, the, the next year or so, and they're kind of saying that this isn't going to have a big impact at the end of the day because you're just talking about a percentage on the uh, just the panel, right? Yep. And uh, and as 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 manu- uh, if 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 it, solar manufacturing prices can continue to kind of come down, if is a big question. Mm-hmm. But in a couple of years, we could be down below where we were even the year before last, right? We could be sure, down in sure. the quarter is kind of the mark. And the, can, and the can tariff does step down year on year, so right? Can we get? And there's there's discussions about it could be repealed as well, right? Sure. So 
Uh, there's that kind of language going. Okay, so let's take a look at our next uh, next one here, Jay. This is one's like kind of a fun one out of Japan. Go for it. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, just remarkable. Uh, it's one of those uh, floating f- uh, solar uh, plant, uh, plants in a dam, I think, right? Yep. And it's, it says, uh, the title here, it's DW.com, Japan Commission's New Floating Solar Power Plant. And it's monstrous. This is um, gigantic. Yeah. It's an entire lake covered in solar panels. I mean, there, there's rectangular areas. Uh, this is something we talked about uh, last show, last show before, I think. Um, but there were we were talking about putting large, floating solar yeah. arrays out there. And for me, I I don't know how safe this is in 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 clement weather conditions. Well, what I mean, was it? I think Fred. Uh, the ground Riddell is pretty stable, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Riddell was here and he was talking about it. And he said, mm-hmm. "Well, I guess it depends. How is it deployed? Is it anchored? Is mm-hmm. it floating? Is it are there pil- are there pillows and support mechanisms beneath? Is it stable and rigid? You know, what kind of a uh, of a of a water environment are you putting it in? Are you right. not, you're not putting it out by jaws, obviously, <laughs> right? So you're putting yeah. it on a reservoir. Yeah. You're putting it in some kind of a lake or some kind of an inland kind of isolated." Uh, hopefully tranquil. <laughs> and that's very much what, the, what this looked like. I mean, looking at the water, it's, it's absolutely pristine. It's cool. gorgeous looking. Yeah. Uh, but it is very dense, and it, it just concerns me. But it is, it, this is this huge. It's Kyocera, right? Really, really, yeah, Japan. yeah. Um, but it's supposed to power around 5,000 households. With 50,000 panels. Yeah, with Yeah, so it's absolutely monstrous and very impressive, but really cool. <laughs> Uh, super cool. Te- techni- technically yeah. a marvel. And I, I can't help myself. I'm going to say it again. Flotovoltaic is just uh, a word that's fun. You like that, right? don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's a fun <laughs> word. It's a fun word. It's, it's not a new one, but it's been po- poking around for a while. Okay, let's head over to uh, Puerto Rico. Or no, yeah, well, actually, this is an article from, in Green Tech Media uh, about Sonova, mm-hmm. <coughs> who is a, um, a lease provider across the country. Yep. One of the big boys, not the biggest one. Sunrun right now is number one. Uh, Sonova it has launched its residential solar plus storage market, uh, entered the residential solar plus storage market with a program called SunSafe. SunSafe, yep. right? And this is interesting. Their CEO, John Berger, pretty sure I've met this fella. Um, as they were coming out here to Hawaii a while back, you know, pre NEM exhaustion, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, um, the it says they're extending out the warranties on the batteries and the full system for, you know, guaranteeing energy production for 25 years. So that is uh, that looks to me like a market play that they're making here, saying, hey, we'll be around longer than most systems. Most systems are pegged at about 20 years. They, right. Their contracts, you know, go for a 20 year period. Mm-hmm. So 25 years is pretty long. Uh, that's an interesting step, and uh, it's good to see that uh, Sonova is moving into this space. Sunsafe, do they pay? I don't think they they actually share the equipment type they're using in this article, do they? It does not. The only one I know about is um, the parallel from Swell Energy, which is a startup in California. Mm. They they offer a service called Energy Shield. Um, that is not their own product either. They partner with LG Chem, uh, Sony Battery, and Tesla right. to actually right. just re, it's repackaged product under the Swell brand, and right. they they integrate it that way. Interesting. So. And those are actually very different products, right? So mm-hmm. uh, Tesla and LG Chem, I think they share. <clears throat> their, well, they're actually all different chemistries. Yes, right. But <laughs> but Tesla and Sonin are. I mean, Tesla and LG Chem are more similar than Sonin. Right. And Sonin is lithium iron phosphate. I think they use Sony lithium iron phosphate. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Tesla uh, and and, uh, and 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 LG Chem. We've been able to talk with LG Chem recently. Had them on the show a couple times, and they talked about. I think they're kind of a little bit more toward. They're a little bit. If I could just say safer, I yep. mean, that's, that was what their graph said, right? Sure. It's It's a, a little less volatile than the Tesla chemistry. Tesla chemistry tends to be very, uh, uh, what is it, very high specific energy. Is that right? Specific density? Energy density. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I'll use for cars, so they're lightweight, so you can really get that energy in and out really fast. Yep. But also has, you know, a little bit of volatility to it. So. Well, that's what you get. <laughs> you're, yeah. ask, you're asking to, to cram in and remove a whole lot of energy really fast. It's a chemical reaction in the, inside that battery, so you're asking for right. a lot of reactant. Yeah, but that's, a, you know, for that swell energy, it looks like a startup to me. Those guys. It is a startup. Yeah, so it's like these guys so. are going, hey, uh, you know, there's an opportunity here in on-grid storage. The big boys like Sunrun and, and you know, maybe Sonova and Solar City has been waning Vivint over the years. Now Vivint just is... nabbed a partnership with Mercedes-Benz. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, hey, we can get a piece of this market. We don't need to get all of it to mm-hmm. be a relevant player. So let's just get some funding behind us and go do it. Right, right exactly. So these so guys are going to be popping up. That might be a good idea. <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> so... Uh, but it's, uh, they, they talk more about uh, uh, Sonova mm-hmm. and about where about what's going on with them in Puerto Rico, and that's our next article. And so the 
<coughs> they said there's 10,000 Sonova systems in um, Puerto Rico presently that are 10,000 Sonova systems. I think it was just 10,000 systems. The number I had um, pre Maria was 10,362. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it says it right here. Here it is. Hang on. Indeed, Sonova saw that damage firsthand while servicing its 10,000 solar customers okay. on Puerto Rico. So they were, really <laughs> the only, they were really the only people out there? Isn't it? Yeah, and this is kind of the way Sonova rolls. They kind of pick an area and mm-hmm. just saturate. If just, I, they, okay. they, and I think they took some pl- the plugs at Hawaii, but I'm not sure that they really made as much progress out here as they did in some other environments. But, right. Um, interesting to see that you know they've got those customers. And it says to me that if they've got that lease active, they have 10,000 leases that are trying to get on the grid, mm-hmm. right, that are – been de or a good chunk of them been deactivated if i don't know how what percentage then um maybe they're gonna they're looking to roll those leases into their on-grid uh battery leases like which would, which would be the right play i would think in that kind of environment you absolutely want those people to have energy well think <laughs> about it if you have a ten thousand people in puerto rico are sitting there going oh we have a we have solar it doesn't work we don't have electricity and i'm getting a bill for yeah, a, for yeah I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not paying that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> so no they're way. like, "Please pay." So, We're like, you know, no, no. no, we don't. Not only do we not have savings on our bill, we don't have electricity. And you want us to pay a I'm bill? I'm sure so. somewhere, somewhere in that contract, it says we will provide power, and they're not getting the power. <laughs> therefore, they're so, in, they're in violation of the lease. So not, Sonova not needs a mechanism customer. to be able to satisfy those clients. You know, yeah. if, especially if the grid takes longer to get back up and running. Sure. Maybe this is part of that strategy. Uh, I would love to see them kind of, you know, in one fell swoop just deploy 10,000 uh, on-grid battery systems. Yeah. I mean, they could be a major player if they did that. Sonova, give us a call. We want to find out right now. Right. Uh, 242-7800. There you go. Yeah, John, uh, please give us a shot and let us know what your strategy is. So uh, yeah. very good, very good. There could be a big opportunity there for uh, Sonova to make some a big headway. Let's jump right over to Puerto Rico. We're just talking about Puerto sure. Rico. Well, we want to go, first of all. Uh, yeah. Take a look. But this is, this is interesting. This is an update. Puerto Rico went dark six months ago. Um, could solar smart grid prevent the next disaster? What do they mean by solar smart grid? Jeez, that is, yeah. What do they mean by smart grid? It's all defining these terms. I mean, I think they're talking about demand response. They're talking about, um, you know, microgrids, nanogrids, uh, being a virtual power plants, all these great buzzwords that we're hearing out yeah, there. Yeah, there's, there's an awful lot of them out there. Effectively, and they, a lot of them mean the same thing, too. That's what I'm kind of finding is that they all mean the same thing. And people use people, them in different ways it, slightly. For sure. You know? Yeah, nobody's quite sure how to use these, how to use these new terms. Uh, but the microgrid concept is something I really want to get behind, where you have, for example, a subdivision, and everybody there has solar, or, or most of the people there have solar, and some of them have storage. And if, for whatever reason, your system is, is not functioning properly you can still borrow a cup of energy from the neighbor yeah <laughs> and not have to go it's redundancy, so you, you, right? yeah but even if your subdivision is completely cut off you are an isolated little ecosystem there right and that makes perfect sense to me yep yep so you get on the horn with the other 20 or so people in your neighborhood you're like well, it, hey, should the grid's down. it should be automatic it should be automatic you get on the horn <coughs> together and you say the grid's down it's like oh i didn't notice right right <laughs> that's, right, that's what right. i want interesting well and the, and the, the the ability to actually do that is sure. related to the legislation that mayor our spoke Correct. about the wheeling yep and uh, you know, so we can actually transfer energy back and forth between TMKs, right? Correct. Between our, our different properties. Yeah. Uh, so that is a legislated kind of impediment yep. to which was there for a reason. We heard all about the story. If you hadn't heard it, folks, you can check it out on our, our website. There's a um, the yeah, you can the, go back and listen to yeah, the interview it in great, its entirety great under the podcast link. But um, so yeah, six months ago, all this happened. They had um, seventy thousand people living along the coast whose homes still remain without power um that's insane <laughs> yeah unbelievable and there's um this is actually a really dense article it's on pbs.org they did a great mm-hmm. job of really deep diving deep and towards the tail end of it they have a um like a satellite image or it's it's just a top-down image of puerto rico Mm-hmm. And they show uh, th- three colors, like the energized lines that are as of January 24, 2018. The energized lines are in green. The partially energized lines are in yellow. And the not energized at all lines are in kind of like a pink. Mm-hmm. And you can see how, I mean, partially energized is the bulk of it, right? So they're just trying to remedy it. And right. it looks like a big part of this problem was that the grid, uh, the, 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 the island and the, the utility uh, there had been in debt. Right, they mm-hmm. had some financial trouble due to some corruption scandals, and but to, to the tune of billions. Right, and they deferred maintenance. You have an old grid, seventy-six years old, mm-hmm. and you have uh, one of the specific areas was trees. Yeah, the trimming. They had deferred the trimming, and, I, and I'm thinking because about because it's an extreme cost. I mean, you're talking yeah. you're talking about a, a 
really green area. Um, yeah. Very mountainous regions. Uh, there's not a lot of landscaping going on <laughs> anywhere in these in these. So that was an area where they could get some cost and savings and service some of that debt. Simply maybe. didn't didn't pay it. Yeah. Uh, and they so didn't pay to do it. And when things went 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 south, actually the pun down, here yeah. because they, they, the hurricane came in through the south. Uh -huh. When things went south, those trees came down, and then yeah, da -dun -dun -sh, and they're in really tough shape now. So it's uh, it's really kind of like a I think Puerto Rico is a cautionary tale for, yeah. for for Maui and for the rest of us, and saying this is something that is is possible. Uh, and I don't do, want to do keep up your maintenance yeah, and, is, is a big deal for sure. And, and, um, and what can we do beyond that? What can we do personally, which is mm -hmm. what the show is really about, yeah. to protect ourselves, to get some redundancy in there? And then what kind of steps can we take to kind of yeah. make sure that this does happen? We're OK. One other thing in this article that really I, I was I was disappointed to find out there's I mean this, this fantastic uh, piece of legislation the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and en en uh, Emergency Assistance Act um, is worded such that in order to get these monies, federal monies, um, you it requires that buildings, and this is a quote, buildings and infrastructure be rebuilt to their original state. Hmm. And that means that no matter what they, I mean, they, what we've learned over the 76 years since some of this stuff has been built, you cannot make any improvements to it. That's in order to get grants in order to get the grants and funding. Feds. Correct. Really? So that's really unfortunate. That's actually hmm. way down in the article you have to read further. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's a long but that's one. but that's really really a major problem because they can they can either accept these monies and rebuild old stuff or in the old style, yeah. or you can do what would be the smart choice I would think and, and re-engineer your grid to be more resilient in the future. Absolutely. But they can't do both. That's uh, yeah. I mean, some of that's policy getting in the way. It looks like of of, of advancement, maybe. Sure. Um, so we get a couple more news points. Let's just kind of breeze through these so we can get to our commercials and try to keep on schedule. Okay. But the um, you know, there's some good movement uh, in the southeast of the United States in terms of. Uh, solar starting to get some traction. We may not have been aware of it, but the southeast was kind of the, the last of the party here. Right. Uh, you know. So we, we, have... we did mention on that on that uh, list of states that there were only four, 44 states right. in the union. A lot of them were in the southeast because right. they simply didn't have any and installs to speak of. But it seems like that's changing. This is on yep. Bloomberg te Bloomberg Technology. Title of the article is Sunny U.S. Southeast is finally becoming a hotspot for solar. That's fantastic. Yep. Uh, and there's a little article, little paragraph here that just sums it up. Virginia is the latest Southeast state planning a solar shift, uh, calling for 5.5 gigawatts of wind and solar power. Uh, Florida also recently replaced an expensive coal-fired plant with cheap solar power. Uh, and developers are eyeing South Carolina as well with a $20 billion nuclear power project abandoned last year yeah. so this is kind of uh, um, you know an exciting time for that area I actually heard on a conference call a couple days ago one of the uh, kind of larger installers there and you could hear it in his voice mm -hmm. he's like he's like look fellas it's going down right now yeah, <laughs> yeah it's really happening so uh, yeah and let's jump over to uh, Hawaii shall we a little bit of local <laughs> news this is really cool for me I, I like this University of Hawaii's Maui College to be 100% powered by solar and storage well sure I mean we've got a state mandate to for everybody to be powered by solar plus nor renewable and storage by 2045 but this is going to happen next year <laughs> this is a big deal this, <laughs> this is a big is so deal. cool um <coughs> they got a lovely picture here with the solar panels all over what what jo Jonah, you said this is what building that's the sustainable science management the sustainable building. science SSM. management building uh, but it's completely covered in pv but um this storage is going to this system is going to be capable of eliminating the entire campus's fossil fuel needs uh and will be operational in 2019 Unbelievable. Very, very Unbelievable. Cool. And <laughs> good job, well guys. Done. Good job. Well done, well done. Yeah, and then we picked this up in Solar Power World. This is a mm -hmm. national, is a national rag here. Story, this yeah. is not like, you know, of course, it's probably in the Maui News, but this is something we were scouring national news and events, and boom, right there is uh, the Maui campus. There we are. Right? So that's amazing. <laughs> uh, there's also a PDF at the bottom of this that shows the, uh, UH Maui's overall initiative statewide, mm -hmm. and that's a nice little and they are And they at. are going to jump uh, 10 years ahead of the state mandate. So they're going to be net to zero by 2035. Which is a fantastic. There you goal. go. There you go. Well done, John. All right. So plenty of great stuff happening in the world today. I'm glad we were able to touch base on some of those things, especially what's going on here in Maui. Mm -hmm. Why don't we jump over our commercials and then we'll dive right into right, our right uh, back, virtual off grid. Stay tuned for how to protect yourself. Aloha and welcome to the Maui Solar Project. It is easy to feel rejuvenated just stepping outside on a magnificent Hawaiian day. Maui Solar Project is here to help harness that energy you feel in your body and use it to power your homes and businesses. As Laura tells us, Maui harnessed the sun so as to slow its path across the sky. Join Maui Solar Project as we harness the sun's energy and slow Hawaii's dependence on fossil fuels. Call Maui Solar Project at 
at 269-2352, MauiSolarProject.org. Gucci Electric, a leading worldwide inverter manufacturer, presents the second generation of the eco-intelligent battery system, the IBIS. Tabuchi's grid-friendly system includes a high-efficiency inverter, stackable batteries, and integration with Jelly software for the most adaptable battery storage system on the market. The system is optimized for energy management and cost performance. Maximize your solar investment with Tabuchi's electric eco-intelligent battery system. The Sonin Battery Eco is an energy storage solution that utilizes intelligent energy management software. The system is available in a variety of storage capacities and allows for expansion. Sonin Battery Eco allows you to save money by harvesting energy from your solar PV system and using that stored energy when rates are more expensive. Sonin Battery Eco is specifically designed to provide you and your family peace of mind in the event of power outage. Our unique power detection system will sense outages in real time and automatically switch over to battery power. See Sonin Battery Eco at sonin-battery.com. MIT-founded Pika Energy, makers of the Pika Energy Island, a smart energy management system that uses solar panels, lithium batteries, and intelligence to manage your energy and keep you powered even during outages. With a clean, intelligent alternative to grid power, you're in control of your energy future. Pika's Energy Island lets you manage electrical costs with HECO-ready self-supply functions. Pika's largest battery, the Harbor Plus, offers 16 kilowatt hours of stored energy and can power loads of up to 10 kilowatts. And if you need more capacity, just add a second or even third Harbor Smart battery to the same system for a maximum of 48 kilowatt hours of usable storage. Pika Energy, own your power. To learn more, visit pika-energy.com. Sundrum Solar is the manufacturer of a revolutionary thermal collector that fits on the underside of your standard PV panel to maximize energy capture per square foot. The Sundrum Solar Hybrid PVT system, combined photovoltaic and thermal, holds the world record for peak hour efficiency, capturing an astounding 86% usable energy. Learn how Sundrum Solar vastly improves electric, heating, and cooling economics at sundrumsolar.com. All right, those were our uh, great sponsors that are, have kept Solar Coaster on the air. Excellent. Thank you again, sponsors. Let's do this right. thing. Okay. Let's jump in. So really we wanted to do something to kind of start to uh, break down the steps to get from a point of energy insecurity mm -hmm. to a point of energy security. And what you, well, what, first of all, what do you mean energy insecurity? What's wrong right now? I mean, I flip my yeah. light switch, it works. What's well, wrong? the old centralized kind of uh, strategy or structure of generating energy at a power plant and distributing it along the lines and then consuming it uh, in your home uh, is uh, not very not very secure. It's it, it's it, it, like we're looking at with Puerto Rico, right? Something happens to those lines, uh, then you don't have power, and that's uh, the type of thing we're talking about here. Yeah, so how do you? It's, it's kind of a joke. My power goes off once a month or so <laughs> i as, yeah as I, and thing. i love rolling around and resetting my clocks mm -hmm. right actually yep. i've just given up I, like all my clocks <laughs> have different phone different uh, well, i just put a battery in it right. but okay <laughs> little ups is all around yeah, that'll work sure sure um but yeah i know so we really wanted to because you know there's a lot of i think um miss on the mi misunderstandings possibly out there sure. about what renewable energies do for us in terms of sec energy security mm -hmm. and that even that term energy Security. It's not a, not a word that naturally kind of fits in our mouths or flows out of our mouths. Right. Like, what do you mean by that energy security? Yeah, it's just not, about not sitting at a bar saying, "Hey, how's your energy security?" I mean, <laughs> right. it doesn't doesn't work that way. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so how do we how do we basically provide a redundancy in our homes mm -hmm. so we have uh, energy and we have power at our at 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 our disposal if the grid were to go out. And sure. because the, the, the notion of grids being compromised uh, across the country, we've seen that more and more and more with extreme weather events, yep. right? Yep. And then it's okay. Well, how do we utilize the renewable energy revolution that's been, you know, the, the residential renewable energy revolution to our advantage in terms of energy security? So with John Boylan last week, he's on the show and he's talking about, hey, you can, we're going to focus in on our major loads, our hot water in the winter, especially, and our air conditioning in the summer, and we're going to focus on PV and battery and really creating a zero grid buy was the right. Language how, he used. how can I offset this four hundred, four hundred fifty dollar bill I get every month? Was his yep. motivation? It was expensive, and he did it, and he did it. He did it. He figured it out. But 20, along that 24 road, days, 24 days out of the month, he was at a complete zero. Yeah, and this and this fellow had it dialed in, right? Uh -huh. And so now along those along that road, though, 
he developed something we could describe as becoming more and more energy secure. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of redundancies in his house. A lot of his things function kind of autonomously. Yep. And uh, he has PV and battery and solar hot water. So when the grid goes down, if he's not buying from the grid, right, 24 days out of the month, and when the grid goes down 24 days out of the month, he wouldn't even know it. Yeah, he wouldn't care. Right? <laughs> so he achieved a good degree of energy security. I think he would care. His lights, his lights would be on. His neighbors would ring the doorbells. <laughs> well, he'd also sacrifice his uh, time of use uh, at midday buy. At thirteen cents. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you like oh, that? Yeah. That was a, once again a money thing. So, <clears throat> what right. type of different systems exist out there? Uh, and we thought of like a spectrum, effectively, right? Right. We kind of so, want to categorize the, categorize these things, and we always wanted to go almost wanted to go like a regular zero to ten kind of scale of. Yeah. A solar where, coaster where rated energy security scale. There you go. Right? Like it sounded that. more professional when we added solar coaster in front of it. There you go. <laughs> this is really just our opinion, folks. You know, we, you know, uh, somewhat, uh, uh, somewhat educated opinion about what we think are the kind of some of the steps that people could practically take to get more and more energy secure. Yeah. So if you think about a, a, a normal situation where you do, normal, I don't know if normal is the best word to use here, but a, uh, a typical situation for many homeowners across the country, mm -hmm. they're effectively connected to the electric grid. Yep. Um, you know, in, in Hawaii, we have a mandate that you have to have solar hot water when you do new builds but you know for the most part but in a lot of places that's not the case yep. and so you literally just consume energy from the utility and yep. we would rate that at a very unsecure uh, uh, that's solar a, coaster that's a zero, a zero. It's, and, and <laughs> right? you've, you've got minus a zero here too it's, 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 <laughs> that was, no, that's no such that thing that was a hyphen but not, I can see not, what that would not be. a number but okay <laughs> <laughs> and in that circumstance you know you're, you're in, if you think, think of it from the perspective of your security there's no security because the grid yeah, goes no down security. you don't have power period exactly um, from an economic perspective you have a default contract with your utility whatever the rates are you're going to pay you're not going to have power and that's, and that's regional there are some places right. where it's very inexpensive to buy electricity and there are right. some places like here that it's not and then from a carbon <laughs> perspective, you know, you're just you're just attaching yourself to whatever's happening with the right. electric. You're, you're at the will of whatever the utility is actually doing. If they're burning coal, you're burning coal. If they're burning diesel, you're burning diesel. If they have nuclear power, you're doing that. Right. So we can all kind of agree that's kind of like the old model, right? Right. And then moving forward, what are some of the types of typical steps? Well, one of the first typical steps tends, tends to be thermal rather than electrical, mm -hmm. right? So domestic hot water, solar hot water, we're all kind of familiar with this. has been around for 100-year-old well, technology. Right, exactly. Uh, we did the research on, on where thermal hot water came from and it's it's very very old but um there's there's a component to this which is just efficiency like thermal hot water is actually 50 ish 60 percent efficient it, all the heat that comes out of this out of the sunlight striking the panels is actually harvested right you get to keep it so that's thermal energy, but you do get to keep a lot of it. It's it's much more efficient than so a photovoltaic right. system. In terms of sheer efficiencies mm -hmm. and uh, saving money mm -hmm. and using your your roof space effectively, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for space, right? Yep. Uh, solar hot water and the the most recent kind of modern versions of those panels are is the best way to go. Yeah, right? it's kind of a no brainer, and that's the reason why it is mm -hmm. legislated that you need to put these on your house. And there has been a longevity <laughs> concern though, right? Because you're moving water around or a glycol solution around. Sure. You know, and you have, um, you know, I don't know if you have that graphic up, Jonah, but the uh, the graphic on that is you can kind of show us how these things operate. There's a couple different mechanisms on how they operate. The bottom line is you're taking hot water uh, and you're moving it down into your hot water tank and you're mitigating your buy, right? Right. But in an outage scenario, it doesn't really help you very much because you don't have electricity to circulate that water around. Right. You can't, right? Actually, you can't actually pump it up to the roof to get heated. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So not very secure. Uh, good carbon rating, right? Because you're making a big impact on the use of carbon. Yep. And from an economic perspective, really great. One Makes of the sense. biggest things you can do. Makes sense. Just 30, 40% of your it'll, electrical tip. If you don't typically. have it now, get it. It'll save you on your bill. <laughs> so let's call that number two. So then moving okay. on to number three, which is what happened in the NEM revolution, mm -hmm. we have grid tied PV, right? And then in the beginnings back in 08 and 09, photovoltaic, what is that? Right. And now it's like photovoltaic is like, you know, like a dishwasher. Like everyone knows it. Everybody knows what it is, and you may or may not have it. There's a lot of folks here, but not necessarily across the rest of the world. Um, but there's some interesting caveats with this. I mean, you, you put solar panels on your house. You're now energy independent if you got a, a good NEM and you sized your system effectively. What's NEM, the utility the, program, the right? The utility program, which means you would be selling energy back to the grid at the same rate that you would normally pay for it. Mm -hmm. So if you you size your system effectively and you use all your energy, you kind of reach a balance point and you only pay what like the connection charges for the grid. Now, if, mm -hmm. the, if there's no sun, then you obviously um, are paying for the power that you're using. But when there's excess sun, you would be selling it back to the utility and, and you get a credit for that. So it all balances out if you size your system well. And that's fantastic. The big caveat is that of that is that if the grid goes down, it still doesn't work. 
yeah. <laughs> which is really frustrating. Um, so you, with all those solar panels up there, it basically shuts itself off because it can't balance. It doesn't know um, what the grid is. It doesn't know how fast to cycle. Uh, it's 60, looking for a 60 hertz carrier, which is what uh, U.S. power cycles at. Um, and you just you can't run your solar effectively. Uh, this is actually what happened to a lot of the folks out there on in Puerto Rico, the 10,000 plus users. Uh, they all thought that they had solar and they had energy and they were protected. You are not. You're not in most cases, right? Almost all cases. I'm going to say like 99% of the cases. There are a couple of non-battery grid-tied solar systems. Right. One not available, and one is a special purchase. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the uh, – so what is it? The SMA uh, Sunny Boy TL, mm -hmm. right? You probably got that up in front of you yes, as well, I just do. like me, yep. which has a – and this is not new. This is old technology. 2013 right. is the article in Power Supply here. Yep. Uh, but they had a 1.5 uh, kilowatt uh, daylight uh, AC outlet available. Uh, for basically a grid outage. Yeah, they right? call it they call it the emergency outlet. It's literally okay. You're out, and you know you're going to be out for a while. You can run an extension cord around the corner to your right. refrigerator and plug it in. There that was go. essentially what it was for. Right. Uh, but that's all it does. It's not going to run your whole house. Certainly, it's not even like a critical loads panel. It is really mm -hmm. one outlet. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, interesting that this was able to be uh, brought to market. You know, got through UL, got through permitting, mm -hmm. all very very early in the in the process. I right. mean, uh, it's kind of one sure, of very like, very that? forward looking. Yeah, for very sure. forward looking. And then of course, when we think about that's that's the one that was that we know of. Anyway, maybe there's a couple of others out there that mm -hmm. do that same thing. But basically, you're you're able to capture a little bit of energy uh, during an outage with your grid tied system through this particular inverter. And, and it is limited. <clears throat> it's one point five. Where I mean, you could have four kilowatt on your roof, but you're still only ever going to get 1.5 out of that outlet. I've actually never inverter. played with this inverter. I've talked about it a lot, but no. I'd love to see one. If anybody out there has one, you know, please let us know what your experience is. Absolutely. Love to hear about it. There's a, in the future, you have Enphase coming around the corner in 2019 doing something really this cool. This is really types. interesting. They were on the uh, on the show, uh, Rigo and Martin, uh, yeah. a few shows back, and they were talking about the new um, inverters coming out in 2019. There's a battery -less, battery less system that will still support itself when the grid goes down. Similar to this TL here, but with full capacity. They haven't really specced out exactly what it'll, how it'll work. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, there are, so in the case of this grid tied PV category, we'd give it pretty much a one for energy security uh, or a none, <laughs> right? Yeah, grid tied is still almost <laughs> almost none. I mean, but, as far as economy goes, it's fantastic. Like I said, if you balance your system well and you were able to get in on the NEM or whatever, um, you, could, you could definitely uh, offset your costs. If you do a CSS program right now, um, you could self-supply... <coughs> So the power yeah. even without battery, correct? So yeah, now I, I tend to think of that as like, um, yeah, could you do a CSS? Is the question without but without battery? Without battery, yes, I believe you can. You can do and that, so, and so you have to pull a John Borland where you kind of move your load, so you would run your dishwasher during the day. You're using your own power as opposed to power. That's a tough thing to do. That's a tough thing to do without yeah. batteries. Yeah, okay. for most residences, right? Because you okay. tend to be using loads on different sides of the right. energy curve. But there, right? but there are other programs. So CGS, CGS, CGS is kind of expired now. Is that correct? Yeah. CGS is uh, uh, so CGS pretty plus, much full. Yeah. CGS full. plus is the new program that does allow you to sell energy back to the grid. The issue with that is that the the credit you get is not the retail rate. So there's a disparity there that you that a delta that you have to right. comp to compensate for. So in terms of so with grid side PV, we're saying that basically you don't have a lot of security. You have good economic uh, 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 opportunities here with uh, saving money, mm -hmm. uh, but and you have uh, you, you know from a carbon perspective, you're offsetting your carbon yep. uh, uh, potentially, uh, and that's that's great. But they're really still not very secure at the end of the day. Right. right. Unless you take some extreme steps, you're, when, when the grid goes out, you're still going to be down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's move into a place where we start to see some degree of en energy security. Yep. Okay, that's from energy security. Things that can actually – so uh, the, the term here is grid-tied PV with battery backup. Mm -hmm. This is a certain kind of system. Uh, so effectively, you've got just what we were talking about before. You have your system up and running, but when the grid goes down, you have a battery in reserve, and that battery holds enough charge to let those inverters continue to work, continue to replenish energy, discharge energy. Typically, you're discharging it to critical loads. Uh, you could have a four-gang outlet available or something like that, and you could actually just pull power through extension cables. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is something that has been kind of pine you know, uh, not pioneered in Hawaii, but the, the some of the technologies were deployed here in Hawaii over the course of the last few years, and the permitting and everything was kind of you know uh, figured out. And so 
the grid tied with battery backup is basically like you have a degree of energy security here. I mean, you're actually, the grid goes out, maybe your critical loads, for example, maybe it's a smaller battery, your critical loads are supported. What are critical okay. loads, right? That's what I was going to say next. So your critical loads panel, um, they, they would actually break it out. <laughs> your entire house runs off a fuse panel. Everybody's seen it. When your breakers strip, you have to go and turn them back on. Um, there would be another one of those usually relocated pretty close to that. That would be things that are really, really important to you. That's what we mean by critical load. Yeah. So your refrigerator is one of those. Uh, perhaps your, your oven, your stove needs power, and if you need to be able to cook, you could put that on there, uh, even just the starter. Uh, what are those other things that you would want to have critical? Uh, yeah, I mean, for um, me, it's computers. Sure, <laughs> communication to my life. Uh, computers, uh, communications you know, gear. Sure, yeah, absolutely. You know, refrigerator, um, uh, lighting, um, some lighting for sure. Things yeah. of that nature, right? So, and, right. You, and you know, if you you want to make sure that you you if you have like in my case a catchment system, mm -hmm. I want that pump on the critical loads. Exactly. Panel, so, right? you, so your thermal hot water <clears throat> pump would be on your critical loads. Right, so you can yeah okay. keep your so you hot water tank circulating. You know, circulating. So, so that's functioning. Properly. So this is really you're you're really still connected to the grid. Your 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 solar system is performing primarily an economic function, mm -hmm. a carbon offset function. But you also have the capability with this uh, this battery backup system to weather an outage event. Now it doesn't make a boatload of financial sense to throw a lot of energy storage up there for the five times, ten times a year we have a small outage, right? Mm -hmm. So it may not <laughs> warrant the economic case, right, for battery backup all the time, right? right. Or if it does, it might be a small system. It, just essentially, a essentially, boost. I mean, it sounds to me like it's an overblown UPS. I mean, something right. you would go down to Office Max and buy to, to stick on your computer so that if the power blips, you don't lose all your work. Yes, uh, with, with the exception that because you have generation on roof, you're able to trick that generation to continue to function, continue to function. and replenish that UPS. Right. And that's where there's kind of like a big distinction point there, right? Okay. You have replenishable power, but it's probably pretty small. That mm -hmm. Typically with battery backup, that's kind of the way. It's not going to last through up. the evening. Well, you know, if you really, I mean, I'm looking at my, you know, we're working on similar projects nowadays, and I'm looking at my energy usage, and sometimes I'm only like, you know, a 0.5 kilowatt base load, right? across. So when I'm looking, I don't have a lot in the house. Right. And uh, so that actually would last a long time, right? So I could, you know, I could, depending on what type of a system I had, you could probably get, you know, curtail yourself, right? Put, turn everything off, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, but so a you know, degree <coughs> of energy security here with grids high with battery backup. But the next one is what our original art was for the, thanks to Jonah, this beautiful art that he created uh, this morning, talking about uh, how to really, I'm going to say flip the script, mm -hmm. right? And we're talking about making the grid your backup and your uh, your solar and your batteries and your technology in your home, your primary. And this is where like a CSS program really comes into play, right? Mm -hmm. Effectively, that's kind of what a CSS that's is. That's truly, truly what CSS means, is consumer self-supply. And you are supplying yourself with energy. And yeah, the grid would be a backup kind of kind of situation. Uh, this is very similar to what John was doing, and I think this is this is kind of what he fell into mm. in pursuit <clears throat> of offsetting that bill. But he's got this whole other security component that is kind of like a side effect. Like I said, it's almost like training wheels. Like like the utility is like they're right there to hold you up in case things fall short. Yep. All right, you put, you're paying a minimum bill for the security of having the utility there. Yep. When you need power and it's <laughs> it's gray or it's it's no there's no it's sign been raining, out. It's been raining for a week, right? Hey, <laughs> give me some power utility right and right. they're there to support you and hold your hand and kind of be like a good mom right yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and uh so you're you're practicing and kind of learning and evolving on how to be uh not so much off-grid i don't think off-grid is the goal but i mean you're, this is virtual off-grid so right. you are connected you know you need power you need energy there's different scenarios where you might need it when for example i'm looking at my my peaks and my solar analytics energy consumption monitor i know you have a snappy on your your house mm -hmm. and i'm thinking to myself i don't know if the on-grid battery system can handle that power or not and i'm excited to try right okay. because if i can't i'll probably get that from the grid right so yeah I'm, I'm quite certain that it can't handle my water heater i've shown you that crap you <laughs> it is offensive and it's so fun when you get that kind of monitoring sure because then you, you start to it. understand um, if, if you don't have a monitoring system that is the first step always go out and, and get one like i said this this mappy was very cheap uh solar analytics is also relatively yeah. inexpensive. Yeah, inexpensive uh go to your local solar installer yeah Maui solar projects Maui solar install project them we're using them, them right now to, um, to to size cgs plus systems to sure. size CSS i bought the snappy off of amazon for a couple hundred bucks i mean it's, yeah. it's really not the a transparency lot. you get is unbelievable you but can get data understand. sets out of that right. and actually upload it to system design yep. software like exactly. energy Toolbase, one of the one of the groups that we really respect that right that's that's past. that's a system that the actual installers use to design your system what we were talking about system balance before that's what they would use you have all this data about how you consume energy and then yep. they can build the system around that so it is for you. Customized. So you get like a, a month or so of snapshots 
30 second snap shots or in the case of Smappy, you know, many, multi, many, multi yeah. snap shots per, per second. And then you don't have to say, hey, what's your electric bill? You're like, I got it. I got it. It's okay. Yeah, yeah the electric bill is not what I mean, any solar installer that comes and says, hey, show me your electric bill. And that's all they ever want to see. That's a problem. Well, it's a it's a it's a good baseline. It gives you a sense of consumption. But then from there. <clears throat> you need to start asking, you know, bigger questions, right? Sure. And uh, luckily, over the course of the last, I'd say, year, the equipment that's available to us in the in the kind of putting on my installer hat for right now, but mm. has become more and more robust, and it's become less and less sensitive to some of those changes. So, it's, so like in the past, it was like, oh, I hope that you know, I got to make sure the power never spikes above a certain amount, mm-hmm. um, or this technology wouldn't necessarily work, right? So, virtual off grid really is an exciting area here. We're talking about um, a economic savings. John has shown that. Yep. You know, we're talking about a carbon offset uh, uh, characteristic and we're talking about a, a good degree of energy security because y- if John can achieve 24 um, 24 day 24 th- days and have the system pay for itself in 2.7 years yeah 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 <laughs> then pretty impressive. Uh, then you're in a situation where when the grid goes down you're in pretty good sh- you're in pretty good shape now the one thing about these virtual off-grid systems is you- you're not typically stacking up a lot of storage you're just stacking up what you need on a daily basis right so oh we got a call in from <laughs> One of our one of our fellows, we got Solar Anthony on the line. Hey, Solar Anthony, how you doing, buddy? Aloha, how we doing, Mr. Porter? We're doing great, sir. Thank you so much for calling in. What's going on today? Nothing much. Just cruising around the Big Island, looking at some solar here, there, and everywhere. So it's, uh, it's a little cloudy over here, but it's it's kind of nice. <laughs> how many virtual off grid folks are over there? <laughs> um, you know what? I um, virtual off grid. There's definitely more than one. I mean, um, I I put a system back in 2014 that. You know, it was grid connected using the nano carbon batteries, and you know that was one of the first of its kind on this island that I'm aware of. So, um, but with the new battery storage, it's just it's a no-brainer to do that these days. Um, you know, with the new CGS program, it's not a very good uh, program uh, for return on investment, um, in my opinion. So you prefer the uh, you prefer the, um, the 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 CSS system where you can create the virtual off grid effectively, right? Where you have your yeah, own batteries. Yeah, I mean that's where it's at. Um, you know, if you got to use two batteries, one inverter, there's always a way to make the math work, and it always there's a way to make it make solar sense. Absolutely. And, um, it's just really beautiful that the technology is affordable. Um, it's available. Uh, the utility is wanting this to happen now, and they're aware that it's going to be a force that they can partially contain. But at the end of the day, you know they're going to have to lot us do it, and it's going to be a really good thing for the island and all the islands. I totally agree with you. Well, thanks so much for calling in, Anthony. Have a great time out there in Big Island. You too. All right, we'll talk to you soon, man. Okay, bye bye. So uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't know if Anthony was listening on the radio out there, but we do have actual coverage on the northern, uh, the Kohala coast of Benin. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. So virtual off grid is kind of like a, tra- a training wheel kind of scenario where you're able to uh, create more and more redundancies and create a situation where your grid is basically the backup. Right. So if you have, like I said, it's a, a number of cloudy days in a row, you can't get solar. You're not generating electricity. You can still purchase from the grid. Um, you're also usually pretty aware of of your own energy consumption because you're now kind of taking ownership right right um but it's kind un- of gamifying it in a sense yeah, like a little a little bit i like manage I like it that. you know yeah. how do how much am i using can i tweak it down a little bit can i make my battery last longer can i get through the night can through, i get through, through the through weekend the can i get through the week right you know whatever, whatever it happens and people to be. love to do that it's like the leaf owner uh, our friend uh, over uh, at the fair she's you know she's like <laughs> how do i get more and more mpgs or more and more whatever right, you, you want to you want to use that <laughs> use that retroactive braking yeah. system um but it's it's basically unprecedented as far as a safety and resiliency for your house and your family yeah. where you know that if the grid goes out you may it may not be you can't change your lifestyle at all but you will be up you will have food you will have refrigeration you will have light and heat hot water i mean basics of sustaining normal life yeah and these these systems because they're operating on a day-to-day basis those batteries you know they tend to be a little bit more than a battery backup system Mm -hmm. the power capabilities you're familiar with how it operates you're able to kind of use it maybe and you can get a good degree of longevity in that. and and all of them have some kind of control system usually an app on your phone that will tell you exactly what's going on you get used to used to using it they're getting simpler which i like i mean yeah and some of the early company with all of them like the inverter the battery the controls that's all one company and a couple of the ones that we tend 
tend to lean towards right exactly. are, are that way yeah because yeah. They, because they're just much more integrated and they they have efficiencies built right. into their system where yep. dc we talk about converting dc to ac uh the, the dc all the way along through the chain coming directly out of the panels into the battery without doing those conversions you get more efficiencies double digit efficiencies yeah, yeah. Uh, which are just fantastic from from a single vendor definitely now th- let's talk a little bit about off-grid because we just hired on a new uh salesman uh for maui solar project uh, mm-hmm. Lo- laurent he is a, a swiss fella and he's been living off-grid in huelo out in twin falls for a while i said oh you're perfect yep join the family <laughs> you know and uh but in the case of off-grid what's the difference between virtual off-grid and off-grid well you actually are cutting the cord you yeah know, off-grid not, i i, I tend, physically i tend but... not to like off-grid as a as a topic um I mean, there's you really are taking ownership at that point but if you if something goes wrong if your system is having issues then you have no power yeah, that's a tough one. And in a disaster situation, there's a degree of insecurity in that, right? In unless itself, unless right? you were very comfortable mm-hmm. repairing it yourself. Are you a tinkerer? Yeah. I don't. Do I, don't, be out I, don't there? I don't see it as a really viable. So, well, well, most <laughs> people that are off grid, it's not a decision so much. It's a it's a financial decision because it's it's more cost effective than it is to put in power lines because sure. they're in a remote area. Sure. And there are the there are the few and far between are the uh, grid defectors, right? Where they're right. like, hey, I'm going to make a political statement here, and I'm going to build like like Hank Will, Hank uh, Hank Rogers, mm-hmm. right? Uh, he uh, he did that. He basically yep. grid defected. He, he said, okay, pull my meter out. I'm going to run it off. But I mean, I'm going to run it off my blue ion batteries. But that's Again, he's, you know, a, he's a he's tinker. a celebrity. He's a Tinker, and a tinker and he knows and a billionaire or a millionaire or whatever. <laughs> right. So shout if out you, to if Hank. You don't, He's if, been on the show before. Absolutely. If you, but if you don't know how to do it, I mean, if you're one of those people that puts the car and the, the key in the car and just wants to turn it and have the engine go, yeah. you want to be able to come into your house and flip the light switch and have the yeah. lights come on, Yeah. you don't really want to know all the stuff you need to know to go truly off grid. Right. Yeah, I think that's true for most people. And I think that the system complexity up until recently has kind of made that a really tough, tough decision to make. So right. off grid provides a degree, you know, of course, if you're off grid, when the grid goes down, it doesn't really matter because you're off grid. Mm-hmm. But uh, bear in mind that if we had some kind of a, you know, uh, disaster, a cataclysmic event, you know, the, there's an article about that Puerto Rico, some of the fellow that uh, the, the, the prices of fuel were so high, so yep. getting access because most almost all off grid systems have a generator, right? And getting access to that fuel could become difficult, right? right? And then if you don't have it, now you got a real issue here, right? Yeah. So uh, off-grid is kind of uh, it's, it's, yeah, its own it's, special it's case. It's a stockpile. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but there are now that that was kind of the those were kind of the six areas of 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 s- kind of status with the utility and relationship to the utility. Yep. Uh, we talked just as a recap. I know we're running out of time here, but we talked about your current model. We talked about kind of moving towards a thermal uh, solar hot water and things of that nature. Yep. We talked about grid tied PV, grid tied PV with battery backup, and then virtual off grid, and then of course off grid itself. It's almost like right. a spectrum, like a, like you're running along a spectrum. You know, where do you want to be? Yep. In my mind, virtual off grid is where it's at. That's the sweet spot, and that's it the makes, kind of technology that's selling. It makes economic sense right now, and you you can do it in pretty short order absolutely now future folks we only got two minutes it's kind of typical for future focus it's our it's the redheaded <laughs> stepchild of the show but i mean there are three categories i want to at least mention yep. right that i think these are, are really these cool. are technologies that are coming that will append to these kind of models yeah. so you already if you have a virtual off-grid system you have a lot of solar well that's fantastic what, <clears throat> what happens at nighttime yeah how do we build this out and get a little more secure right so right. one idea is micro wind Right, and of course, you know, some permitting hurdles here, but we got a little tiny little windmill we're playing with. That I thought that thing house. was cute. It's literally, I, I could put Beautiful. my arms around it. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, gorgeous. But array based wind, right. meaning like four or five. Uh, well, 250 it's, or 300 watt uh, yep. wind turbines. Which is essentially the same as a single solar panel. So you right. can think about one of these windmills being a panel. So you have right. to have six of them. And they, they're moving parts. So one breaks, but the rest of them are still functioning. Sure. Right? And then what's nice about that is that diversifies your energy curve. That's a kind of yes. a, a great little phrase there. Diversification. But, diversification. But you know, instead of just being you know, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3 in the day, you can get a 24 7, right? right? So that's wind. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about two other areas real fast. Really fast. Uh, hydrogen is one that I love. I want to see hydrogen make a play. Um, it's still not the best as far as efficiencies go when you're trying to get back the electrons. But if you have an overproduction of PV, just make a whole bunch of hydrogen. You're going to do nothing with it otherwise. So <laughs> extra PV uh, right, or extra wind, you're, you're, you're splitting that uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen. You're storing the hydrogen. You're using it for fuel, cooking fuel. You can you use, use it for it generator That's fuel. That's the fun stuff. You can use it directly. That's how you, you do it, right? You have to run it through a fuel cycle. And what's the last one, Jay? Last one is um, vehicle, vehicle storage. So you talk about um, vehicle to home. 
when, right now you charge your right. electric vehicle from the house, but you can actually reverse that, flip the script again, thank you. Love it. And put that back in your car, in your house. There you go. We got 10 seconds. Gary just gave us the high five. High, high sign here. This has been the Solar Coaster, folks. We got a lot of dense content in there today. We are sponsored by Maui Solar Project, Tabuchi Electric America, Sundrum Solar, Sonin Battery, and Pika Energy. Uh, thanks so much. It's been a great show. Aloha Friday. Have a good one.